it's like if you are able to like really cultivate that in your relationships like that goes so far it's not to say that all the relationships will you know live on forever but it's like you'll be able to talk about the things and go this is actually not working and there's no other way to like make it work and so we can just like break away from that right and so it's just like being able to like talk about the things is what allows you the freedom to create the relationships that you actually want to be in and be a part of welcome to normalizing non-monogamy the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their fascinating stories. We strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy approach to non-monogamy. However, it's important to remember that everyone does it a little bit differently, and the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we produce this show for entertainment purposes only. Please be aware that we aren't doctors or therapists. Consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy. Well, welcome to episode 295. We're Finn and Emma, and today we have a super fun, wonderful conversation with Liana. Full of laughter. Yes, we laugh a lot in this one. We hope you do too. <laughs> I think you will. I wouldn't say we'd guarantee it, but I guess, I don't know. I guarantee it or your money back. <laughs> your money back <laughs> from this free podcast. That's right. Anyway, Liana is super fun, as we may have mentioned. She is a relationship coach and works primarily with queer and poly people. She also co-hosts the Queer and Poly podcast and co-runs Love Deeper Coaching with Elizabeth from episode 263, which Liana will talk about a lot more in the episode. Yeah, but we just wanted to make sure you know all of that up front. You can find links in the show notes to not only uh, the podcast and their coaching, but also Elizabeth's interview, which was also full of laughter. Yes. Shocking. Yes. I don't know if it would be safe to hang out with these two <laughs> because I think all you would do is laugh and you'd probably pull a face muscle. It would be a riot. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond being hilarious and a relationship coach, Liana has been exploring non-monogamy for the last few years. She discovered it in her last year of college, but well before that, she was figuring out what it meant to be queer, what it meant to be gay, and how to navigate all of that. And so this conversation is absolutely full of amazing, I don't want to say tips and tricks, but stories and experiences that Liana has lived and how she moved through those and shares all of that really vulnerably with all of us. And so I think there are some tips and tricks in there, but more yeah. than that, it's her story and it's beautiful. It's funny and hilarious and also powerful. Nailed it. Yeah. I should have let you say the whole thing. You could have said it in three words. <laughs> Nailed it. Anyway, we are super excited about this conversation. For anyone who is a premium subscriber, we're going to jump right into the interview with Liana right now. And for anyone else, we do have a couple of announcements per usual. So first up, if you're not familiar with a premium subscription, it's a way to skip these announcements up front, jump right into the interview, but don't worry, you still get important dates in the outro. To sign up, go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, scroll down on the homepage, and you can sign up there for as little as a couple bucks a year. And the next thing we wanted to tell you about is our wonderful community, our virtual community, which is made up of almost 300 amazing humans from all across the planet. We, we talk about this every week, but that's because it's amazing and powerful. And we wanted to say a huge thank you to all of our existing members for showing up every day and being a part of the community. If you are looking for people like yourself, people who are out there figuring this out as they go, peer support, people who've been doing it for years or people who've been doing it for days, this is a wonderful place to hang out and learn from other people who are navigating non-monogamy or possibly navigating monogamy in a non-monogamous relationship. We've yep. seen that too. Yep. So please check it out. We would love to have you join us. You can head over to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, click on the community tab, and there will be a tab there for community, and you can fill out the application, learn a little bit more, and join us. Yes. Also, just a quick reminder that we are launching some weekly support, peer support groups as well. Finn has a weekly men's group, and I am just starting a weekly women's group. There are slots open. We would love to have you join us on our website under weekly groups. You can find out more and submit all of the information to join us. 
that weekly groups tab is under the community tab. Yes. In case you're you're lost. <laughs> Sorry for not making that we clear. We want you to be found. Yes. Next up, we wanted to share with you an exciting event coming up on Saturday, July 15th. This is the Day of Visibility for Non-Monogamy. It's actually the inaugural Day of Visibility for Non-Monogamy, which is a global day of action to advance visibility and acceptance for non-monogamy in all its varieties. This event is organized by OPEN, the Organization for Polyamory and Ethical Non-Monogamy, which is a nonprofit dedicated to foster the polyamory and non-monogamy movement by advancing cultural acceptance, building political power, and supporting non-monogamous communities and leaders. We are super excited to be part of this Day of Visibility, along with many other supporters, lots of people. And the tagline for this whole day is, by sharing our stories, celebrating our communities, and raising awareness for our, of our values and identities, we can normalize non-monogamy and create a more open and loving world. So we would love you to get involved. You can go to dayofvisibility.com or follow the links in the show notes. They have local events going on. You can host an o- your own event. You can join their online Discord community, um, spread the word that you have the art submissions they're asking for. Just lots of ways to get involved and be supportive of this awesome day. Yeah, we're super pumped about this and a huge amount of gratitude goes out to all the people over at Open who have done the work to put this together. We've had a few of them on the show in the past, but I'm sure we'll have more in the future. And so just check out their work as well. Links are in the show notes over at normalizingnonmonogamy.com. Yes. And the last thing we wanted to tell you all about is our favorite way to get tested for STIs. Surprise, surprise. We tell you about this every week. And the reason we do that is because it is extremely important to know your sexual health status so you can share it with anybody who you might be interacting with where you need to know your sexual health status. Yes. Let's say... Anybody. That's important. It's super important. And so the way Emma and I do this is we use a service called stdcheck.com. We've been using it for years and so have many, many, many of you. And we have heard nothing but amazing things about it. It is fast. It is affordable. And it is super easy to use. And it's really discreet. You don't have to have any awkward conversations with anybody other than your normal awkward conversations that you might have in your day. I'm (laughs) saying you you don't have to talk to your doctor. (laughs) I think that highlights how awkward most of my conversations are. Yeah, anyway, keep going. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the point is if you Trying use, to not, not make the intro awkward. The, well, good luck with that. <laughs> the point is if you use the links in the podcast show notes over at normalizingnonmonogamy.com or on our resources page, you save $10, which brings the cost of a 10-panel test down to $129, and you help support the show financially, which is how we're able to continue to bring you this amazing content. Yes. So we're very, very grateful, and we would love for you to check that out, get tested, know your status, and share it with all of the people who are important in your life. And with that... Maybe not all of the people who are important <laughs> in your life. Maybe the people who it's important for them to know this like, information. There's some people you probably don't want to share that with, just to, you know... But you could. You always can. You always can. And you can tell them to use the links and the show notes to save themselves some money, too. Yes. All right. The last thing... Yes. A quick reminder to reach out to us. Send us a voicemail. Send us an email. We would love to hear from you. And you can do this so on the Contact Us page on our website. And with that, we're going to jump in and laugh our way through this interview with Liana. Let's go. Good morning, Liana. We are excited. Well, actually, we didn't even verify. Is it Liana? Are we pronouncing yep. that? Yep. Okay, well, that Just think it. Liana Banana. And All right. it works. <laughs> and now I will think of nothing else for the next one hour. I appreciate it. <laughs> I was like, exactly. That's how people always remembered in like elementary school and middle school. So people from that era of my life were like, Liana Banana. <laughs> All right, well, we're leaving this in. So good morning, Leanna Banana. We are glad we are glad you're here today. We're excited to talk and just welcome. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm really excited to be here. So I appreciate you all welcoming me in. Absolutely. Do you mind just getting us going by introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about who you are, and then we're gonna dive into all your relationship gas. <laughs> well, that's excellent because um, I love doing that. I am a relationship coach, so this is my jam. Um, but yeah, so my name's Leanna Gage, and I have been coaching uh, mostly in the space of like queer relationships um, and also now polyamorous relationships. Uh, I identify as queer and poly myself, so this is my experience. Um, and yeah, I've been I've been a relationship nerd for. 
probably like nine or 10 years at this point, uh, just because I was absolutely terrible at relationships. <laughs> That's how I started. Um, and so, yeah, I just really started studying relationships, um, like pretty heavy early on in college and everything. And from there, just kind of led me on different trajectories and found coaching in general. I, I worked with a career coach and then absolutely just loved that form of support. And I was like, wait, there's relationship coaching. Like this is even (laughs) better. (laughs) Um, and so started, started actually getting certified in that. I have a couple different certifications, um, in coaching and just continuing to do that as well. Uh, but yeah, I just mostly started with queer relationship coaching because I like knew that was a struggle for me and also for my friends in the queer community and just not seeing models and like, everything's just like, Oh, here's a study for men and women. Right. <laughs> it's like in the, and so it's like, okay, well, like, is this applicable? And, you know, just trying to navigate different things. And so, you know, I just really wanted to actually help in that community and then um, just started to kind of <laughs> The, the, the queer community and the poly community tend to run very close together. Um, and so obviously, you know, you, you blend it all. And, and because I am also polyamorous myself, it's like, yeah, then, you know, people get attracted to, <laughs> you know, for you for that reason and everything. Um, and so I just really love working in the spaces of relationships that mm-hmm. are very outside of the norm. Um, love tackling like limiting beliefs and just like old patterns and just, really how you want to create your relationships. I just love, I mean, that could be applied to any relationship, but especially in in like queer and poly relationships, I love it. Yeah. I love that. And I think too, what what is powerful, what you just said there too, is the stuff that, the things that you can learn and apply in your romantic partnerships, it translates really great to your friendships, to your family, to Mm -hmm. any relationship, just any interaction you can Mm -hmm. make in the day. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I love that. And I'm excited to dig in and, I know, I think one of what we were just talking in the kitchen before we jumped on here, we were reading through your, your form and you, you described yourself as severely gay. And so we, <laughs> we, we, thought, we thought we would start. Which we loved, we, we loved. We loved that. So maybe we, we usually start with people going back in time and talking about when non-monogamy came into their mm-hmm. life, but maybe talking about where this, this diagnosis of severely gay came in. <laughs> And it's and it's or a condition, you know, right? It is. It is. <laughs> Diagnosis sounds so like intense. That, that word is like. <laughs> I'm like, no, I take it. It's a diagnosis. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe let's start there, and and mm-hmm. we will weave in relationships and polyamory as yeah, they come sure. into the picture. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, that, that is, that is the timeline of things for me. Um, but yeah, I, yes, I, I, I'd say I'm severely gay and that was because one of, one of my partners actually, uh, this is like probably a couple of years ago now, but she, we were just talking or whatever. And she just looked at me and was like, Leanna, you're like, you're gay, but like, you're, you're severely gay. <laughs> started busting up laughing and so ever since then i'm just like but it, like i felt really seen and in, in, in that yeah. you know so yeah yeah this resonates this resonates with yeah. me right for sure i was like oh that feels really good and so, <laughs> so i do like to share that because a, a number of other people are like oh my god like i really feel that for themselves i was like do it i love it yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah i mean i think so like when when i was a little kid i I didn't have any like sort of queer role models or any like queer people around me or anything of that sort. So I didn't even know it existed. Um, and then I just remember I was a little tomboy. I, you know, was always just rolling around and everything, which is like, Oh yeah, sure. Whatever. But I just remember always being like, you know, like just like the girls and the boys. And I was like, there's just like this, like, I feel like much more like fluid in that space. And I don't really understand all these girls loving the boys. And like, I'm like, yeah, they're homies. Like that's what it was for me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I actually remember in, in second grade. So probably like seven years old or so one of my friends, um, we were on the playground playing basketball. And she mentioned how she has two moms, like her mom had remarried and married a woman. And I just remember, like, I can still like feel the moment, see the moment of just like, that's a thing. Like, (laughs) wait a minute. This is a fantastic. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It just like unlocked like so many possibilities for me. Like, cause I was like, I had never had the, 
desire or want of like having a family or being like, get married and all the things. And, but that made so much sense. I was like, wait, that's an option. Like I would sign up for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Something that like, as that kid, I was like, Oh, that might, I didn't, I didn't feel like I fit into any of these molds, but this mm-hmm. one maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, for sure. And like, I just, yeah, I can just remember that was such a like powerful moment for me to know that that was even a thing. And then of course, like as I grew up, like, yeah, then you get more exposure. And I mean, I grew up, I grew up in Southern California, which, you know, it tends to be more on the liberal side, but I grew up also Catholic and it's like the community I grew up was a little bit more conservative. Um, and so, you know, you, you tended to hear, um, not so great things about, you know, queer people and queer community. Uh, so I started to like, just think about like, wait, is that wrong? Like, I, I, but I, I never really like still associated myself with it. Um, and then it wasn't until like early high school and I, and I had had the signs up until then. I was like, why do I really like my friend so much? This female friend of mine, like, and all that stuff. But it wasn't until like probably my freshman year of high school that it just like slammed me in the face where it was just like, I can't ignore this anymore. And then I was like, wait, how can I fix this? Cause you know, I had all of that mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. programming of this is wrong and you know, all, right. all the things, <laughs> Catholic guilt, yeah. And, yeah. 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 you know, and, and so it was just, it started just to really help have me just try to explore myself of what, what is actually true for me and what isn't and, and all of that. And, but it didn't, it didn't happen until like probably my last year of high school that I actually like officially came out. And I, um, you know, up until that point, I was just like, I can figure this out. I just will never be in a relationship or I can, I don't know, I'll do something or all these things. And it, it's, it still wasn't that I wanted to be in a relationship. Like there wasn't like, I need to tell someone so that I can get a girlfriend or something of that mm-hmm. sort. It was just like, I, I can't keep this in anymore. Like this is just, I, I don't know how, how I would manage. And so I actually told my mom who, um, was, was the one that it was like the whole reason of being Catholic. Like she was raised Catholic and everything. Yeah. And, but like, I'm just really close to my mom and I told her and it was just like the scariest thing in my life. <laughs> you yeah. know? And yeah. which it does like tie into like when I eventually came out as Polly as well. But like the moment of me coming out as queer was just like, terrifying. I was crying. It was just like all all the like very stereotypical like experiences of of that moment. And, but like the way I was received by my mom was just everything for me. Cause she was just like, I love you. Like, it's all good. Like, don't like, she asked me like, do you have a girlfriend? Or I was like, no, (laughs) she was like, do you want one? I was like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. This is the part where I'm at. Okay. (laughs) So, um, but like that just, like that just opened it all up for me. And like, from that point moving forward, then I went into college. And so that's when the college experience, you know, opens up all, all the opportunities. And like, that's when I actually engaged in my first like relationship and like romantic relationship. And, um, you know, and so that just, I've only dated in, in the queer space. I've never like, Oh, dated a guy or anything. Um, so it's like, that's been my whole experience, um, in dating and, yeah, I just kept getting more severely gay from that point. <laughs> <laughs> kept intensifying, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Learning more, growing more. <laughs> I, I want to say, I was thinking as you were talking, I'm like, I love that you reclaimed severely gay because you know there is, there are many, at least one file somewhere in a Catholic school where it is written, this kid is severely gay and we have to do something about it. And you're like, yeah, fuck that. We're going to reclaim yeah. that. It's not a negative. Right? Yep. Yep. No, that's exactly. I, I do feel that very much though. And, um, yeah, I think it's cause I, I do really, you know, it, it gets tricky with, you know, identities and labels mm-hmm. and stuff like it, it gives you language of course, which is really important, but it's also hard because then you'll latch onto it and then, you know, start to play the role and what you should do and all of those things. But it's just like that always, just, it feels so part of me. Um, and I always like, you know, look at my relationship to the, to the, to the label of queer or severely gay, all, all the <laughs> things. Right. Because, but it's just like that it does, like, it just feels there's so much like fluidity in that for me. And like, that's what feels like part of me. Right. It just allows like the expression of that. And, you know, I think that's what really, I need it. Like, that's what the, the internal struggle in myself was like, I wasn't allowing that expression, whether I was going to be in a relationship or not. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I just needed that expression to open up so I could actually 
be open to more exploration around myself outside of relationships, inside of relationships and everything. So, you know, I, I just always, I always think it's, it's always very fascinating with labels and, and, you know, <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. I love that. And I, I think there's a part in there that is interesting and I love to pick at it with you, which yeah. is when you said if the label, sometimes then you almost go down that path and it almost boxes you in at mm-hmm. times. And it sounds like you, I mean, you said challenging limiting beliefs is a thing that, mm-hmm. that you really thrive on. And it sounds like your first one that you challenged was at seven when you learned that somebody had two moms. Mm-hmm. And like, that was like, holy shit, that's a, that, that belief system just got blown away that mm-hmm. it has to be man and woman. Mm-hmm. But then you've, you've come around, you know, 10 or 12 years later and it's okay. Now I've determined or I've, I've realized I'm gay. Mm-hmm not letting that be a limiting belief in some ways. And I'm just Mm -hmm. curious about that because I, I could see where you, you now fit in this box, but you don't know how to fit in that box Mm -hmm. because you've never been in that box. You don't (laughs) know. And and so I'm just curious kind of that experience for you, like figuring out how to play in that sandbox. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I played right into it when I first came out. (laughs) I was like, all right, what do you do as a queer? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, and I, like, we, we always joke around how, like, it's like the, the phases, right. It's like, everyone has to hit their rainbow phase, right. Where you're just firing rainbow flags everywhere. Um, and so, but I do remember just being like, okay, what do I know about queer culture? I don't know anything. And so like really starting to explore that. And like, I, I recognize too, for myself, um, of like, oh, I, I, I fell into like the stereotypes of like, the flannels and Doc Martens and like listening to Tegan and Sarah. Like it was just like, like I, I, yes, I fall into those stereotypes, but it was also like at that point when I had just come out and everything, I think it was more driven by like, what am I supposed to do? Right. Yeah. Like, cause it's like, especially as a teenager still, you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing in my life. And so maybe if I yep. just follow the prescription of, yeah, being gay, then I'll figure it out, right? And, yeah. well, and especially so, in just in, in yeah. that area or that time of being, especially at that time being a teenager, like mm-hmm. in that time of your life, you're always trying on new things. You're always yeah. trying to figure it out. You're like mm-hmm. guessing this, guessing that. And so, like, if someone's giving you like the prescription of like, mm-hmm. well, this is what it means, like the right. stereotypes. Well, why not try those on? There's like. Mm-hmm. Why not? So. Oh yeah, no, and I think that's that's what I was unconsciously doing, <laughs> you know, and yeah, and then just like trying things on, and it also helped because in in going to college and it was like far away and everything, and the college I went to was very, was very like hippie and liberal and all these things, and so there, a lot of queers flocked to that area, and so it was really nice to have exposure to so much diversity in the queer mm-hmm. community. And it was just like, Oh, well, like that doesn't fit a stereotype or, mm-hmm. you know, oh, that does, but like, that's really just what they want to do and you know, whatever it was. And so just being able to notice that in like the reflections of what people were offering to me, then I was actually able to start to go, what actually feels good for me. Right. And I think that's obviously going to be like a natural evolution of things, but like even just looking at my first or second year of college, like that, those versions of me, I like, I can look at that and go, yeah, no, I was definitely trying to like make it work. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then like how I just started to branch out, which relationships did help me in actually being able to do. Right. And so the more, the more relationships I got in and then just being able to like, okay, expand, expand, expand and go, what do I want to do? Oh, I want to do that. Like even just the example of like, my hair is short now. This was only like I think I did this like a year, a year and a few months ago now. Right. And like, and I had, if you asked my little child version of me, like, Oh, what do you, what do you want to be like when you grow up and stuff? I always wanted short hair. I always wanted tattoos. I like, I was like, (laughs) Oh yeah. And I just always, I wear like the same clothing I did as a kid. (laughs) (laughs) Very consistent. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's, it's hilarious. Like, it's like, I've gone through, I've gone through so many changes and like the point at which I'm at now, I just laugh because it's like, I've basically ended up, um, where I was. (laughs) 
<laughs> which is really, but it's really beautiful because like, I, I remember like the, when I had initially cut my hair, cause I, again, I was resistant to that because it's like, oh my God, that's just like another stereotype I'm going to fall into. Right. And it's, just, and then it's just like, oh man, like, is that me? I don't know. Like, am I thinking it's me? Because that's what like people assume with like lesbians and all that. And, and so I, it was like a, a struggle in that. And then when I actually cut my hair, I was like, I just remember looking at myself being like, Oh my God, like this feels like me, like this, this is me. And even like my partners have reflected back to me because they knew me with like longer hair. And, and now they're just like, my, my partner was just like, I feel like I'm actually seeing you. And we've been dating for like a couple of years at that point. Right. She's like, I feel like I'm finally seeing you. And, um, like, I was just like, yes, like I feel like that for myself as well. And so that was like, I had to push through that limiting belief. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I, yeah, I just know I'm giving my little, my little child self such a gift in like the way that I'm actually expressing and presenting myself now, um, which feels, feels really good. Mm-hmm. That's I amazing. It. I, I, there's a few things that came up for me in that, which one, one is the idea that when we're kids, before people start telling us we can't do shit, we don't know what's, mm-hmm. what's not possible. And it was almost like you, you had that already mm-hmm. and you finally got to like give that back. Mm-hmm. And I think that's yeah. really cool. And, and it's also the second time we've had somebody come on the show and tell almost that exact same story. We had an episode <laughs> with this couple, Sonia and Gabe. And she went through that transformation where she went, he took her on, I think it was their anniversary to get her hair cut at like this Mm -hmm. queer barber shop. And she Mm -hmm. said they cut her hair and they spun the chair around and she basically started crying and was like, Oh, there I am. And that was the moment that she like saw herself Mm -hmm. and that, and that was uh, just, it just came back to me when you were sharing that. Cause I think just being able to see ourselves the way, that we see ourselves, if that mm-hmm. makes any sense, is is powerful. Oh yeah, like it's the the f- reflection is is a lot more accurate, you know, as to like what you're actually feeling inside. And yeah, no, I mean, I I still <laughs> like Elizabeth will always tell me, it's just like it's so weird to think that you haven't had this haircut the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like when you, you, you get, if it feels like it fits, it then feels mm-hmm. like what it was never. Th- not that right <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and I, I I mean I have those moments too where I just look at myself like what took me so long in that yeah. <laughs> well I, I think too there's a part of that transformation that you, you touched on which I think is very natural which is you you learn something new about yourself and I mm-hmm. think this could even be let's say you pick up an, a new hobby mm-hmm. and you show up at the first meeting of your, whatever your model airplane club, and Mm -hmm. you're going to do everything by the books until you Mm -hmm. start to like feel a little more safe there. And then you start to like poke the edges of it and say like, well, Mm -hmm. where, where, where can I really have my impact here? And it, it sounds like that was very much sort of your experience here was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go be the stereotypical queer person Mm -hmm. that I see everybody else. And then, Mm -hmm. and then others joined in the party and you're like, the stereotypes aren't, there is no stereotype now. Yeah. We're just, we all just have to figure it out for ourselves. But mm-hmm. it's so, I think it's so common in all aspects of life. Like we want to fit in and then we start to, at least some of us, I think, start to be like, yeah. okay, I'm kind of tired of fitting in. Yeah. I want to, I want to stop fitting in and start being me, but it takes a little bit of time to build that confidence. Oh yeah. And that's definitely what I needed to build. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. How did, how did you build some of that? Do you, do you have any sort of memory of what sort of what happened for you that allowed you to build that confidence those couple of years you said relationships played yeah no for sure I mean I think that's what it it was kind of because like in being in a external external relationship with someone where it's I mean I I don't think I really was a hetero passing ever but (laughs) you know at least least it brought some question for people like "Ah." maybe. Right. But you know, it it still was like, Oh, I could play it if I needed to. Right. Uh, especially when I had like my longer hair and was like dressing a little bit more in the femme type. Um, and, but like being in the, in an external relationship with like my first girlfriend and stuff, it's like, Oh, it's, it's out there. Right. You know? And, and in that new experience of like, okay, I am, I am out myself and then now we're out together. Um, and just recognizing, 
you know, the different experiences that we had of people like maybe saying things to us or, um, just weird energy, weird vibes, wherever you go and everything. And that just kind of reinforced for me, like, like, no, this is, this is me. Like this it's, I'm not like having the the thing said to me or whatever it was, it was like, yeah, that's hurtful. And also like, it's still not putting me down. Like, it's just like, I, I, it helped me to like really build my core trust in myself in that. And like, part of that was the confidence of like, no, like you say that thing to me, you say it's wrong. I say, no, it's actually not because this is very true to me. And then it's like, okay, I can be a little bit more confident in this. Right. Um, so it's like, I think really being able to hit those challenges, especially as like a couple and everything. Um, and also in that, like my first relationship, we, she wasn't out like to all of her family. Um, and so like that also brought up like <laughs> and let insecurities inside of me kind of bubble up too. Cause it's like, Oh, are you, are you ashamed of me? Or, you know, like why, mm-hmm. why can't you come out now? And like all those kinds of things, which, um, you know, I know it's, it's a tough situation all around. And, uh, but I think even just that first dynamic because of that factor in the relationship also helped me to be more confident in myself of like, I want to tell everyone, mm-hmm. like at least in my, in my, uh, family friendships, all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not going to be like, no, I'm not gay. Like, or mm-hmm. whatever, try to play it off. And so it's like having that also <laughs> was just like, I'm no, I'm confident in this. I'm going to tell people and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that too. Um, I'm curious too, along the way, like we could talk, keep talking about this topic for hours. I know. <laughs> I don't mean to like clear just, your schedule today. <laughs> right. Right. I don't mean just like it off. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to abruptly transition, but I would like to, I'm curious how mm-hmm. and when like different relationship styles played into this whole journey for you. Yeah, for sure. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think part of part of like one of the things I just love about the queer community is that like when you when you meet when you meet your friends in that space, it's like everyone's just like so there for each other, right? Because it's like you're part of a marginalized community, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's marginalization within that marginalized community. Mm-hmm. And so it's like there's all kinds of things playing out. And so all of us know like what it feels like to, you know, be outcasted and to not feel like you have a place and everything. And so I always appreciated that of just like how my friends and I were just always there for each other. And like, I do remember my first like romantic partnership of just, I'm noticing for myself, I'm like, I want other relationships. (laughs) (laughs) This is a predicament. Uh, (laughs) But I do remember like noticing, like I didn't, it didn't feel like it was wrong to me. Um, Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, I shouldn't want this or anything. Um, I just more was like, that's interesting. Like, and I didn't know of anything with polyamory or anything of that sort, but I do remember just being like, I'm not going to, I wasn't having any sort of like romantic partnerships with anyone, but I had, um, like, you know, I had my girlfriend and then I had like a pretty, a couple close friends that like looking back, I'm like, we were totally a polycule, (laughs) (laughs) you know, but it was like, but I felt, I, I just remember being so, comforted and feeling so safe in that space where it was like, we were, we were very affectionate and everything. Like we weren't having sex or anything, but like we were very affectionate. We were always there for each other. Like it was like, we treated each other like partners and like, you know, calling each other like, Hey, I need help with this. And like, Hey, like, let's go do this. What do you want to do? And then they like take care of me on my birthday. And like all these, like, you know, it's just where you look on the outside and you're like, what's going on. (laughs) But I remember just being like, yeah, like that feels really good. Um, and I didn't find out about polyamory probably until I would say like my fourth year of college. Um, and like, so throughout that time frame of like first year of college, the fourth year it was like in and out of like different relationships. And then like, I had a friend who was like, she was in a relationship, but they were very open. Like that's how they described it. And Mm -hmm. then they're like, they're very open. And like, we would just hook up here and there just like, as we wanted to. And I was just like, wait, but he's okay with that. Like, <laughs> you know, but he was like, I would talk to him on the phone. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like, you know, and I was like, okay, yeah, I, all right. And, but I, again, it was just like these experiences and it 
felt really good for me, mm-hmm. but it wasn't until like, well, yeah, like that fourth year I was in a class and like, there was these, these two girls and, and this class was very, cause I was like more in like environmental science track at the time. Mm-hmm. And so it was very like hippie and like, yeah, everyone's lovey dovey. Like, I mean, obviously <laughs> well, that's, where, that's where the flannel comes in. We, we, yeah. we, we, we know that we went to an engineering school and the environmental sciences, the civil engineers, it was. Yep. Forestry. I don't think it yeah. had anything to do with sexuality, but it was just, it was flannel all day. We were also in the Midwest, so that kind of. Is, yeah. It's yeah. so a Midwest uniform anyway. Yeah. I was like, well, see, I fit right in into that, that major and everything. So <laughs> it did. It really did. Um, and yeah, there was, there was two girls who were like, they were like, they're really close and they were like, they were very affectionate to each other and stuff, but they would always like come and talk to me. They're like, Leanna, we should like hang out, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah sure like you guys are cool or whatever but it just never like linked up and then they were telling me they're like yeah come to this like it was like this i don't know experience party and they're like yeah there's other people and this and that and i was like wait what is going on exactly like what is this and like and they still no one used the word polyamory or non-monogamy or anything of that sort but they're just like yeah like it's just relationships are like very fluid like it just like and i'm like you know what this is very heavy again <laughs> not like out, out of the norm but and i was just like interesting and they just kind of describe dynamics as like oh yeah like we you know they have sex or they don't or they're yeah you know, they're mm-hmm. open and not and whatever it was and i was just like i well, this is interesting and fascinating and i i was like very curious but i didn't engage in any of the things because i was actually like not in a relationship at the time and i was just kind of more like i'm just trying to focus on getting school done mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, like, let me, let me do that. Um, and, but I, that was like my first kind of like, what is that? Like, you know, it, it was, it was a little bit more blatant of like what was going on. Right. Um, and then it wasn't until I was actually got my teaching credential and one of the, one of the people in that, in that program, she was openly polyamorous mm-hmm. and yeah. she, she, she was like, she had a boyfriend at the time and another partner. And like, she, she, she came up she's like, Leanna, like, she's like, we should, we should hang out. And like all this stuff, I'm like, oh my God, all the poly people trying to get at me. Like <laughs> <laughs> they knew, they knew they're like, oh my God, let's get this one. Like she doesn't know yet. <laughs> And, but like, I remember she, she, she would open, like very openly talk about it, like in our class and everything. And I was just like, polyamory, like, what is that? Like, I still was like, I don't know what that is. Cause I have knew of polygamy, which yeah. I was like, well, that's very different. Like, I know this is a different word. And so that's a different concept. Um, and so I would just ask her about, I was like, wait, what is polyamory? Like, and you know, and she's like, oh yeah, like we're, everyone just knows that we're in we're in a relationship. Everyone's cool with it. You know, you can, whatever you want it to be, you can do it and all this. And I was like, wow, that's fascinating. Like, and you agree to that? Like, <laughs> and, um, I was actually in a relationship at that point in time when I was getting my credential and I never, I mean, I never brought it up to her of like, Hey, what are your thoughts on this? Um, but I do like, I mean, looking back, on that relationship specifically and like what led to us breaking up and just like the struggles that we were facing. I was like, wow. I was like, if we had been able to talk about polyamory, I was like, I feel like that would have like just helped us out in terms of just like, Oh, like we're putting so much pressure on this. And I, I I still wonder, I'm like, I wonder if she would be cool with polyamory. Like I think having that conversation would have helped me to go, okay, this is not what I want, you know? Yeah. And so after I, after I ended up that relationship though, that's where I was like, dude, what am I doing? Like, how come it's not working? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and then that's where I started to like, really like learn more about polyamory, um, and different, different books and resources and just being like, wow, that really feels good to me. Um, and just noticing how i I really, I was like, I had no shame around it or anything. I think I was like, I think I kind of carried that in being like coming out as queer first. Mm -hmm. Um, and just being like, Oh yeah, well, this is a part of me. Yeah. All right. It's just part of me. Just like I'm queer. All right, cool. You know? And, um, yeah. And then I, I just started dating again and everything. Um, met one of my partners in a coaching program. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and like we were friends for like, uh, like, a year or two or so, um, before I started dating. And then, um, yeah, eventually, eventually met Elizabeth in another coaching program. 
As you can see, I have a type. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just enter these coaching programs and use them as a dating app. Exactly. I'm like, intentionally, like, that's not the reason I'm doing it, but it works out that way. <laughs> exactly. I was like, you guys using dating apps, doing it all wrong. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. And so, like, it's just, you know, been, been from there, just moving forward on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, was your first. It sounds like maybe the first time you really, I don't want to say that you, you, you actually did the non-monogamy was, it seems like it was, it was somewhat recent, it, but it was sort of entered into your, it, it, it entered into your sandbox a few years back. And then it took a little bit of time to really yeah, like to, find your footing. Mm-hmm, yeah. I mean, I think it, yeah, it probably came like more into like my consciousness around, um, probably like four or five years ago, like where I've like really felt solidified in it. Mm-hmm. Right. And not, I'm not so like nebulous and Oh, this concept out here. And then, yeah. And then it was just like, oh, okay, well, and cause I'm not, I'm not one to actually like actively seek to date people. As you can tell, I don't go on dating apps, <laughs> <laughs> I just go on coaching programs. Um, but you know, so it was just like, Oh, Oh yeah. Well, eventually like when I, when I start, dating or meet someone and that's the conversation now like that's going to be what it's what it's going to be yeah. um and and so yeah it's just been like okay yeah then um yeah i met my other partner <laughs> and i was just like yeah and it's like i'm i always feel open to things but again it's just like you know mm-hmm. it'll yeah. happen when it happens if it happens <laughs> So, so your your partners know when you sign up for another coaching program, <laughs> you maybe have determined you have some capacity to 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 bring somebody exactly, else in. Exactly, you know. <laughs> you yeah. know, you know, Tinder's like ten bucks a month versus this <laughs> huge investment that you're about to make. But you know, it's it's working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like imagine. It's like the filtering process, you know, it's like we have that common interest of coaching, obviously. So, yeah. you know, right. right. And, and self-improvement and mm-hmm. just be, yeah, intentional living. So I, yeah, I think it's a genius strategy. To be <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I think in a lot of ways it highlights, you know, meeting people through interests, right? Yeah. Like the, then, you, then you at least have something in common and it can open up a lot of doors from there. Oh yeah. I mean, I think that's also like, you know, it's one of the common questions in, in polyamory of like, how do I meet other polyamorous people? Right. And, you know, depending on wherever you live and all, all the obstacles and everything that's like, what do you like? Yeah. Go do that thing that you like. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about things as yeah. you're doing the thing that you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's an option, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think too, what else you, you dropped a nugget in there that you were friends for a year or two before mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you moved to a, a, a different type of relationship mm-hmm. style. And I think that's really important is to say, yeah, you show up at whatever new thing you like doing or that you're going to start doing and you start talking to people you don't want it to be like the first word out of your mouth is like, oh, I'm polyamorous and I'm looking for some partners. Like, okay, like we, we'll get there. Like yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah. establish a friendship. Let's establish some rapport. Let's, mm-hmm. you know, there's more than just jumping into that. And it, it sounds like that sort of worked, worked well for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. And it, it was actually funny in that specific situation. Cause like we met in, in the coaching program and everything. And we just, we just started talking. Um, and like, we just always kept talking on the phone cause she was in a different state at the time mm-hmm. and everything. And just like kept connecting. And then we, we started talking about relationship stuff because she also loves talking about relationship things. Um, and I was like, yeah, like polyamory. And she's like, Oh my God, I've always been like thinking about that. And like, so then we just started talking about it and, um, it still wasn't like, Oh yeah, this is where it's going. Um, but it was just like, that's how natural it was. It just like, Oh yeah, this is just part of the conversation. Um, and then of course, like <laughs> then things transpired into like, Oh, what do we want to create here? Right. Um, which I absolutely loved. I was like, I love that like organic flow to things. So right. I know it takes time and patience and, you know, it's a little bit it can seem a little bit more challenging, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, but I, I just absolutely adore that like form of like really getting to connect with someone. Yeah. Yeah. The slow build and the process behind it. Mm-hmm. I'm curious though. So the, the idea of, well, you're both talking about it, you're interested in it, you've seen or, or heard of models. 
mm-hmm. when you actually started doing it, how how did it go? Because it's it's one thing to see other people, yeah. hear other people <laughs> and, and it's definitely one thing to read a book. But when you have to take yeah. the book knowledge and, and apply, apply it in real life, yeah, how did how did that go, Leanna? <laughs> always super smooth, right? Always always really easy and exactly how the book lays it out. It's exactly how it does. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think I think for me, I was. Uh, I was not anticipating like the, um, the internal challenges to the extent that they like showed up. Um, I will say though, too, like I was very grateful that like for, for us, like we had already like been really open in our com- like communication. Like we were very direct <laughs> with each other about things. So like that, that helps. Um, but it was just being like, I remember, um, she, cause she, she's very just fluid and like travels around a lot and everything. So it's like, she makes connections everywhere. And there was a point cause she was, she was living with me, um, when I was actually settled out in Colorado. And, uh, there was a point at which she was like seeing this guy, like she like went out and was like, Oh yeah, I'm really interested in this guy or whatever. And like, they went out and everything. And I just was like, I wasn't, I was like, this isn't jealousy, but it's also not jealous. <laughs> but like, it, it was just like an interesting sensation that I hadn't experienced. Right. And like, just noticing that for myself was like, Oh, mm, there's stuff here to look at for myself. <laughs> but I, I mean, and, and it was like, it was hard to have like conversations around that. Like, even though I knew it was like very safe and everything, but it was just like so much, it's like the shame, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's the shame that you, you, you bring into that, that conversation of like, well, I shouldn't be feeling this way. Right. Like, um, and I just, I just remember that like being a very supportive space to talk about things. And like, that really helped me to, it was such a nice, nice foundation of things to be like, okay, there will be challenges. (laughs) Just in case you thought there wouldn't be, um, there will be challenges. And like, if you do have that space of communication, if you do have that space where you can like talk freely about things like that will do a lot, you will still struggle. And this is a very key piece in all of your relationships. Like, and so like, that was like the main learning point that I got from that experience. And, um, you know, just continuing to notice that for myself of like, Oh, what's present for me in that and everything. And, and even like when I, uh, started like talking with Elizabeth and, you know, my my mother part was like, yeah, like, do you go do your thing? And like, she took me to the airport to come visit Elizabeth for the first time in Seattle and everything. And, you know, and it's just like, she's, you know, she's always just been very like fluid. And and so it's like, she, she goes and does her things. And, um, you know, it, it also just helps her. Like she's, she has told me like, yeah, there's certain points where I'm like, am I okay with that? You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, we both are like, what? Um, and then of course, you know, then like when I started dating Elizabeth and like she had other partners and, and you know, it brought in other dynamics, right. Where I'm like, okay, so there's other partners of this other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm curious on that. T- when, when, when that part, when your partner drove you to the airport and mm-hmm. you're flying out there to see Elizabeth, it sounds like that was sort of your first time on the other side of that coin, like you're the, that's your first time yeah. going to do the, the yeah. thing, the thing that everybody says you should never do. Mm-hmm. And you're about to go do it. Mm-hmm. You mean by going to meet, yeah, meet you, someone? Well, and even you make it even crazier. Like, well, yeah, my partner's driving me to fly in <laughs> and go fly out to see somebody else yeah. where they know there's an attraction. They know there's mm-hmm. a connection. Mm-hmm. Like all of that just broke every model that, that we ever mm-hmm. grew up with. Yeah. yeah. But you're sitting in it. You're, you're, you're sitting <laughs> yeah. in the car with this person driving to the airport. Then you're sitting on the plane. Like what's, what comes up for you in that moment? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think, yeah, definitely. Like when we were driving to the airport and everything like, in my mind, I was like, is this happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just like, this is interesting. Um, and you know, and we, and we talked about, I mean, we talked about like, Oh, is everything good? And she was, she's like, yeah, no, it's just like, it's, we called it the vibe check weekend. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, yeah, you gotta check the vibe. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, like I remember in that being like, is this okay? Like, and, and they, we talked about that, but like, that's still going in my mind of like, 
is this okay? And I mean, even also on the, on the, on the side of like thinking of Elizabeth too, it's like, cause you know, she has her partners out here mm-hmm. and like, edit, you know, make sure like she's free and, and all of the things for me to come out here. And so I'm like, is that okay? That like, she's going to spend time with me as opposed to the other people. <laughs> like, you know, like it's all about, is this okay? Are we okay? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, and, and so it was like, there was like a, like there was nervousness. There was like, anxiety in that but there was also just like excitement in the sense of like but this is like this feels so good on the flip side of all these worries like this also feels really, really good mm-hmm. um and i do remember also like being like when i was on the actual plane and just like probably like people probably looked at me like i was such a goofball because i was just like smiling they're like i don't know what i'm doing what is that <laughs> I'm just sitting here smiling for no reason, and this is like, yeah, a, no, no, my, <laughs> yeah, don't mind me, like, duh. and I mean, I think too, like, you know, because when I like when I when I officially landed, and like Elizabeth came to pick me up from the airport and everything, right, and I just remember being like, wait, like, is this? I, I don't know what's going on, like. I, <laughs> Like, I, we were actually just talking about this the other day where she was like, I was just like, okay, we're just going to, you know, see how it feels to be, you know, around each other in person and not just like how we always had calls and stuff. And, um, you know, so I was like, either way, I, I think we would just be solid friends. Like mm-hmm. regardless, this is going to be a winning weekend time. Right. Like mm-hmm. I was, I was all about that, but I was just very like, I don't know what's going on. Like maybe I've made this all up in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> You look in front of the hidden cameras, like what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I was just like, I, you know, what? Elizabeth just like Elizabeth wants to be friends, and that's cool. Like we're gonna hang out. Like it's good to go. Like it, it, that was all like what was going through my mind. <laughs> and then like yeah, Elizabeth said this like the other week. She was like, oh no, I had zero doubt that this was gonna be a romantic and sexual relationship. <laughs> I was like, well, you could have told I, me. Yeah, <laughs> 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 but it, it's like I do remember that though. Like when she. I like, I remember seeing her pull up and like coming out of the car and I was like, I don't know what's about to happen, but it's happening. So, okay, let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know what's going on. And so like, yeah, it was just like, it was an interesting time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you kind of answered the question a little bit, but like, how did the weekend go? Like, it sounds like it was a, like, it went well and you worked through, like, yeah. Con- considering Elizabeth stuck her head in it. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, man. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the vibe was checked. Um, <laughs> which is actually what, like, my partner had asked when she picked me up from the airport when I came back. She was like, so, vibe checked. And I was like, vibe checked. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think also, like, in... Because I, I came here for, like, I think it was, like, four days or so. And I just remember being, like... I don't know, like, do I get close? Do I not get close? Like, it was just like, cause it, but you see, cause you're going through all the things of like, is this still, I don't know what's going on. Is this okay? I don't know what's going on. Emo- you know, emotionally, it's really, it's difficult. Like it's, it's, yeah. we don't know how to process through all of these things. Well, especially if we're not even great at those things in a monogamous con- like <laughs> yeah. that, that whole dance of do I get close, do I not get close? Like that's a tricky one. I mean, for me in a monogamous setting, and mm-hmm. so you you go and you mix in a whole bunch of other people <laughs> and dynamics, and you're like, well, this is even harder. So I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah. And that you know, very rarely are we ever taught any of these things, like how to manage through all of this. <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure. I mean, and that's the thing. It's like I mean, and. Cause it's like one thing to, you know, okay. Like learn about the stuff, right? Like we know that's, that's very different than to experience it. And even, and even in the different like forms of connecting with people, right? Like, cause it's like, oh yeah. Like connecting just like long distance wise versus like we're in closer distance or you're here or there, or I'm talking to this other person, but it doesn't really go anywhere, but I've started talking to her and it starts going somewhere. And like, you know, and it's, these different experiences, you're just like, wait, is, at what point is this not okay? <laughs> <laughs> and being able to like, just like have that in your mind. Like, and Cause like, I remember like that first weekend, like, cause we, we didn't like kiss or anything until I think like two or three days in, I think it was the third day that I was actually here. Even though I was like, I was like, oh my God, I really want to. But again, I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> I was like, that would be really weird. I don't know. Um, one step at a time. One step at a time. I'm here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, from bit by bit. And um, and I think even, yeah, like, I think it, it is just 
I think with any sort of like new partnership or new connection that you're exploring is like, you're still in that space of, wait, what are we do-? like? Just us, <laughs> us two together. Like, what are we doing? And then also like, you know, other people are involved. So it's like, what's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's an interesting I think it's just an interesting dance every single time you start to like date someone because you're trying to figure out that dynamic itself. And you're also trying to figure out how does this play into my relationships, their relationships, all, all the things that are going on. And so it's just like all, all these different layers that you're kind of navigating through, which, you know, is exciting because it's like, it's very, I love it. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm so curious about <laughs> what's going on. And I do love, I do love me some anticipation. Like, mm-hmm. 100%. And so it's just like being able to kind of be in that space and, and notice what's actually going through your mind and going through your body of like, what am I feeling? What are my thoughts? What what needs to be said? What doesn't need to be said? And, and all of that, um, which I mean, I love experiencing. I love coaching people. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? So um, yeah, like it is, it is exhilarating. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, and it's not, t- it's too dissimilar to the limiting belief right way back in at, at seven. And again, mm-hmm. you know, at 18, the, you're, you're, you're in a new environment, even though you kind of lived in that environment mm-hmm. as your partner went and explored. Yeah. yeah. This was your first time. Like I'm now going to go and sit in that position. And it takes a few days or maybe some people weeks or months to be like, what, what can I do in this space? And mm-hmm and figuring that out. But it sounds like your limiting beliefs were much, you knew they were just beliefs at that point. They weren't rules. You just had to figure out what, what, what it was for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? yeah. And I think, you know, I think that I am like, you know, I, I mean, people come, come out as queer and then poly or poly and then queer, or like mm-hmm. or together at the same time. Um, but I think like that just, I I was very grateful that I had (laughs) all that experience of just on the side of being queer to kind of lay that pathway for me of like, I've walked this path before, right? Like it's, it's, it's obviously different, but it's similar and, um, being able to just go, it's, it's okay. Like it's okay for it to be weird and awkward. It's, It's okay for you to not know what you're doing. And, you know, and just being able to notice like, is that my thought? Is that what I think I should be doing or not be doing? And, um, you know, I think that just gave me a lot more freedom in the space of polyamory, which I think allowed me to feel a lot more lightness in this rather than if I had started off as poly first, you know, that would have been the one that was leading the charge and then queer. (laughs) It'd be like, Oh yeah, well I'm I'm gay. So what's up? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious, just a little bit of a timeline. Like, how long ago was that weekend? Uh, that weekend was... Approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was like two, two years ago. Okay, so a couple so years. Ago. I wasn't sure if it was Almost like... two years? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if it was like two or three or like eight or nine or something. Like, you know... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Not eight or nine. Yeah. Not eight or nine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I I think it's it's an interesting. I know I keep saying this, but it's interesting when you have the experience of being the partner who's let's just it's, it's not to sound pathetic, but you're the partner who's at home while your partner's out mm-hmm. doing the polyamory, mm-hmm. and it sounds like you did that for a while before mm-hmm. you were the one who went out, and and that is it's like you practice and practice and practice being in one role and then Mm -hmm. you get to flip it and be in the other one. And I think (laughs) it's, it's just, it's interesting to me how, even though you could be doing it for some amount of time, you still have to experience the other side of it to experience the other side of it. There's no way (laughs) to experience it through somebody else's lens other than your own. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think, yeah, having both of the, having both of those experiences is, very, very key, especially like in, if you haven't experienced that, you know, cause like now <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, go do your thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, did it, did it change your approach when you're on the other side? So now you had the perspective of both sides. Did it change anything for you and how you. Yeah, I think it, I mean, I think it just allowed more like compassion, um, for like um, both, both spaces, both perspectives on it, of uh, just being like, Oh yeah, I could see where that brings up stuff or, Oh yeah, I could see where you're like, it's not like, I'm not doing anything wild, but <laughs> you know? And, um, 
So I, I, yeah, I think it just, for me, it just kind of helped to regulate it for myself, like internally of, okay, I've touched it, I've touched it. And now I'm more, um, I'm more familiar with it so that Mm -hmm. if I, you know, when I need things in that space, it's like, it's okay. Like Mm -hmm. I know probably like they're really excited and da, 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 da. And, you know, because I know I get really excited and I know maybe that they're, they're just maybe feeling a little insecure or they need some reassurance because that's what I was feeling. Right. So it's like, at least I know how to check in more, um, of what's going on, um, regardless of wherever you're at in that, in that role. Um, and so, yeah, I think it just, it does. It allows a lot more compassion and empathy, um, for yourself, for your partners and just the experiences that everyone is having. Cause everyone's having an experience when someone else is dating, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I think that's interesting because you, you say that everybody has an experience when someone else is dating. And I think when you're dating maybe monogamously, mm-hmm. those experiences are often what your friends, your family, they have an experience around the person you're dating. Mm-hmm. But in this world, you're dating somebody and you're dating somebody <laughs> and, and you're all having a much, sort of a heightened experience around mm-hmm. that dynamic. And it's, mm-hmm. it is different. Oh yeah, it is. Cause it, I mean, cause it just brings up everything that you've been taught not to be like, your partner shouldn't be looking at anyone else, let alone dating someone else. Right. And so it's like, Oh, what's wrong with me? Right. Mm-hmm. Like those are the questions that start to come up and that's where the insecurities come up or, um, you know, jealousy and, and just the things that people often, you know, are very, uh, hesitant to, to feel in polyamory. Yeah. Um, and And so it does, it's just like, it really, it really does invite you though, to look at like what's present for you around this. And, um, you know, I think it it does heighten it all. (laughs) The emotions are are very interwoven in that space. Um, because it's like, yeah, your, your partner is dating while you're still dating. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make sense in terms of the math we were given. (laughs) whole new numbering system <laughs> yeah like it's just like wait what is this um and and so i do like i think it is just like being able to also just again hold compassion and everything for everyone's experience in that and also knowing because it is heightened there's a lot more like tenderness around that and allowing the space for that because i i think to even you know as i like for myself right now i'm just like yeah like go explore do the things and like tell me about who you're excited about and, and everything like i'm very open to that and also knowing that that will and can change as life context changes, you know, and like how I'm feeling inside of myself or inside of the relationship, like that's going to change. And so just be continuing to like hold the space for that and go, Oh yeah, well I'm good now. Like, no, that's not the case. (laughs) Right. It's always growing, always evolving, always different things to discover. Well, and it's not a linear path, right? If let's say you, you reach the, the elusive compersion and Mm -hmm. you're just, Oh, I'm, but that doesn't mean that someday you can't be like, oh, that didn't hit me right. That I'm struggling mm-hmm. with that. You, you don't be like, well, you reached compersion. You don't get to go backwards. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, there's, right. there's an linear. It's enlightenment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I, I think it is too. Like, just, like that is, I know. Like, I mean, just working with people in in polyamorous relationships, it's like. Oh, but I was so, I was fine with them dating this other person and then this, this new person. And, you know, I don't, I don't like it or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, what's going on for you in your own life? What's Mm -hmm. going on for you in your relationship? Like what's actually getting brought up in this new dynamic that they're exploring? Like what's going on in this and not going, you're you're doing polyamory wrong. You're a bad partner. Like whatever it is, it's like you're, you're a human being still. (laughs) let yourself be a human being and just get curious around that and be able to talk about that. I mean, that's why it's like, you know, that first learning point for me of like the the actual space of communication that is so key. It's like, if you are able to like really cultivate that in your relationships, like that goes so far. It's not to say that all the relationships will, you know, live on forever, but it's like, you'll be able to talk about the things and go, this is actually not working and there's no other way to like make it work. And so we can just like, break away from that. Right. And so it's just like being able to like talk about the things is what allows you the freedom to create the relationships that you actually want to be in and be a part of. Yeah. Or break and break away from the parts that aren't working, but maybe Mm -hmm. leave the ones that are right. And so that, I think that's a different paradigm than the sort of the stereotypical monogamous paradigm Mm -hmm. that we often see, which is something's not working. 
so I have to get rid of this person, bring mm-hmm. in a new person that yeah. fixes that problem. They don't have that problem. So I'm just upgrading mm-hmm. rather than like, hey, this part of our partnership wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Why don't we figure out what wasn't working about it? Maybe we, well, you know, great example, like maybe we don't sleep well together. Somebody's mm-hmm. a light sleeper and somebody's a snore. We don't sleep together. So we took that part of our relationship away. Mm-hmm. We sleep in separate rooms mm-hmm. and we still have an amazing partnership. But yeah. we didn't have to be like, well, I snore, Emma sleeps light. And so we just got to get a divorce, I guess. That's the only yeah. way out of this. Problem. <laughs> but that's sort of what we're taught. Yeah. Is oh, yeah. You're, you're upgrading. And I, I tie in that into the, I think, again, it's just breaking those paradigms of when you meet somebody new and you're like, oh, this person's amazing, but it's not because this other person was flawed. Mm-hmm. And I think looking at that from an internal state of, oh, Emma's dating somebody new. It's not because she wants to replace me. Mm -hmm. She just maybe found something really new and exciting about somebody else. And it has nothing to do with me. I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I almost don't matter. And that's also can mess with (laughs) you. It's completely independent of me. I, I don't have to be bad for her to find something new. That's Mm -hmm. that's also good. Mm -hmm. Oh Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that's a, that's a big one, right? Cause it is, it's like, Oh, they're interested in someone what's wrong with me, Mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, what had them go try and seek out someone or, you know, what can I not give? Cause it's like, I mean, it goes, it goes all the way back to like the mononormative way of thinking of like, I must give my partner everything. And it's like, no, number one, even in monogamous, (laughs) no. Uh, (laughs) And, and also like, you know, just being able to really make it your own and like, what do you enjoy about this relationship? What's not working as well? What do we need to change, adjust? Because we have that, we have that ability. If we're both willing, obviously, right? But it's like we have that ability to do that, um, and to and to do that with other people, you know, and like however we want to, however we want to create from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm curious, Liana. What does your relationship constellation look like today? Uh, yeah. So I have, well, I have my two partners. Um, and I mean, Elizabeth has <laughs> a couple of partners. <laughs> um, and I always, I always, uh, tease her about her list of suitors. Um, but, and then, uh, yeah, my other partner, she's, uh, I was like, I guess she's like very, she's like, I don't know if I would use the word dating him, but <laughs> I'm like, we'll just say dating. Um, and and like, it's always, it's interesting in that, in that relationship. Cause like I get, like I said, like, you know, she travels around, has different connections. And so it is like, I'm always like, okay, that person is special to her, like for whatever it is. Right. And so I'm like, okay, ask about that person and you know, whatever it is there. Um, and so it's just like, I have a lot of extensions through that. I, one of my metamors, uh, through Elizabeth, like we're super close. Um, my, my mom always, uh, she calls like all, all, all the girlfriends novias, like in Spanish, and yeah. So she's, mm-hmm. no, yeah, like novia number one, number two. And then she calls my metamor. She's like, Oh, he's, no, he's novia number three. <laughs> 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 so I have three novias, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and, uh, so yeah, so like, it's just like we have, and he, he just started dating someone, um, recently. And so we went and hung out with them for the first time, you know? And so it's, uh, it's a nice little poly constellation we got going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, And I love yeah. that you're, it sounds like, well, your mom was accepting when you came out mm-hmm. as queer and yeah. then it sounds like accepting too of Polly. I mean, the fact that she calls <laughs> different Novia is like, that's wonderful. Right. So. Yeah, no. And yeah. And I think, yeah, I think again that like coming out as queer really helped me in that. Cause like when I like told her however many, like four or five years ago about being polyamorous, I was, she was just like, what does that mean to you? Like, I was like, what, what a great question, mom. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and like the way that I described it was just like, yeah, just being able to like be in fully expressed relationships, whatever that, that means for that dynamic. Right. Um, and she was just like, hey, interesting. All right. Like, <laughs> you know, and, but she, you know, and she's, she's great. Like she's, she's always been just phenomenal to all of my partners. Um, and so I'm, I'm always very grateful and she always, you know, ensures that she has like some sort of relationship established with them. Um, like she came out, uh, she came out here a couple months ago to, to visit during her spring break and, you know, got to like hang out with us. She, she hung out with Novia number three. He took mm-hmm. us to lunch. <laughs> 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 so it, does, it feels, yeah, it feels really good. Yeah. 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 I love it. 
That's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) There's much worse Spanish words she could use. I love love it. That's amazing. Amazing. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I've really enjoyed our conversation and I, I hope we don't, I hope this is not our last time talking. So I know. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was yeah, for anyone listening, we're not done with Leanna, but <laughs> we, we love to ask a question and, mm-hmm. and uh, it seems that you love to laugh and uh, maybe bloopers are a part of your life at any point. <laughs> if, if you have one or, or two that you wanted to share as just a way to, to drive home the point that we don't take life too seriously. <laughs> if it wasn't already a given. Um, and then maybe just another question or two before we let you get on with your day off. All right. Awesome. All right. A blooper. I'm like, I should think of one with me and Elizabeth. <laughs> so <she's> been... <laughs> it doesn't have to be sexual. It can be whatever. No, whatever. No, I mean, yeah. We can also do that too, but I'll, I'll just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, the floor is yours. You, you lay on, as many bloopers as you want for it. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I can, I, I think we always, we always laugh about this when like we, when she initially told me she had a crush on me and like how very um, ignorant I was of her telling me this at the point in time. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And we, we laugh about it, but uh, we were, we were on like a, a zoom call, like just chatting, hanging out and everything. And like this, uh, we do talk about this too on, on our podcast. Uh, eventually the episode will come out, but like I had had a crush on her, but like, I was like, she doesn't have a crush on me. So like, it's good. Like, let it go. Um, and, and then apparently she did have a crush on me at some later point. <laughs> and so when we were on, on the, the zoom call and everything, and we had talked for like two hours and just laughing so hard, having a great time. And she was, she she like stopped and it was just like kind of wrapping up the conversation. And she's like, so, and like, she's kind of get a little like nervous. I was like, what's going on? (laughs) And because it's very uncharacteristic of her, if you know her. (laughs) And I was just like, what? She's like, so there's like, there's a vibe here or something like that. And I was like, I mean, yeah, you just talked to me for two hours. And she just like her face was just like you're not getting it. <laughs> like, like, I was like trying to think of like how do I say this for her to think to like to understand what I am saying, and I'm like I'm still like not getting it. <laughs> and like mind you, I have been on dates where I didn't know there were dates before. Like that's how clueless I am often. Um, and and then like as soon as I like kind of saw her face and like start to like think, and I was like wait a minute that no that would be i don't think that's what's happening here or whatever and then she was just like no like what i'm trying to say. <laughs> and then like that's when i started catching on right and, and and then i just was just being an asshole and like messing with her and i was like come on elizabeth use your words like communication <laughs> right and she was just like Oh my god! <laughs> and she'll tell you too. She's just like, "Oh my god, I was so pissed off at you." <laughs> I'm like, "This is what it's like to tell me you like me." Um, <laughs> but she was like, "She's like, yeah, like I have a crush on you." <laughs> and I was like, "Nice, I have a crush on you too." <laughs> Sometimes saying those words can be so scary. And like, oh, that- yeah, no, for sure. Like, I give her all the props for like you know, going, doing that. And especially even after I was like, what are you talking about? I mean, like that just like deflates any form of confidence that you actually had. <laughs> so hold on. How did you, how did you land at, at, at the airport? She picks you up and you're still like, I think we're just going to be friends this weekend. I think she was, I think she was getting yeah. revenge, Leanna. She, this was her revenge. You know what? And I respect that. <laughs> Yeah, no, like I definitely am like, you know, cause every, every, like when we started to like, when that, from that conversation onward, like we were talking every single day. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, yeah, for sure. She's interested in me, but I, it's always like, I never, I never let the hopes get up. Like, especially cause she didn't initially have a crush on me. Right. And so I knew that, like, I can sense that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I don't know what switched. I don't know what changed. I don't know how long this is going to be. <laughs> like, and so like when I landed, I was like, we're just going to see what happens. We're just going to see what happens. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I think that whole that whole vibe check we could also just be a blooper of like how awkward we were. <laughs> of like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awkwardness there too. do you want me to get a rental car like <laughs> <laughs> no i straight up was like i was like oh i can i'll just like uber like whatever just like what no <laughs> you can ride in the back seat but you're not in the front seat <laughs> yeah, i was just like it was like don't be weird and i was like well i'm going for a I, treat then aren't you i'm gonna be weird <laughs> <laughs> i'm like well this whole weekend's gonna be weird <laughs> Uh, oh, amazing. <laughs> amazing. I love it. Um, is there anything else that you would want to get out there before? Did you have one more question before I? No, I think it's that question. But before you answer that, do you mind sharing a little bit about where people can find you? Yes. How yes, they yes. can find your work. And of course, links are going to be in our show notes for all of that. I know you told us a little bit about it, but mm-hmm. maybe give us a little more. And then we're going to ask you one more question that Emma already let out of the bag. And then we'll let you go. <laughs> what are you talking about? I didn't hear you. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> <laughs> remember she doesn't pick up on anything right. you know, <laughs> exactly like what do you what you like me <laughs> this, is, this is a podcast what are we doing, what are we even doing here today? <laughs> honestly though um yeah so uh i am most active on on instagram and so my handle on there is at leanna Griepsch. um check the show notes because of the spelling. spelling. We got you. We got <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Otherwise, if you want to really get crazy and try it, go for it. Um, but yeah, and so I, you know, I'll post things there and you can always, I'm always welcome to like messages directly and everything. But uh, yeah, a couple different options that I uh, offer or are part of is I do offer um, a couple spots for like one on one coaching with me. Um, I don't, tend to take on too many more than like two or three people at a time. Um, but if you have questions around that, you can always put in like an application and it's all through the, the link tree on Instagram. Um, and that's both in queer and poly relationships. So if you want to work one-on-one with me and then I also coach with Elizabeth. Uh, so that's as part of love deeper. That's her coaching program that she created and that's group and one-on-one coaching um, within polyamorous relationships, queer relationships, all, all the things, uh, which I absolutely love that I can do group and one-on-one stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can all you can find all of those links on on my actual Instagram page. And if you just you know, you're curious, sign up for a call with us, and I would I would absolutely love to do that. And we also, Elizabeth and I, started having our own podcast, the Queer and Poly podcast. Um, so if you want to hear the shenanigans of us talking, which I, you know, <laughs> gave you a little preview of, <laughs> <laughs> of how ridiculous we can get. Um, <laughs> yes, we recorded our ridiculousness. Um, and yeah, you can find the Queer and Poly podcast. We have a couple episodes out currently and we'll be releasing more and more. Wonderful. And yes, links to all of that will be in the show notes. <laughs> do, you, do you still do some of, you, you said you kind of did coaching before relationship coaching and was that sort of broader life and, and sort of just sort of coming into your own? What did, what did that look like? Cause I imagine people probably heard you and being like, man, I need some help just in general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I started off more as like a, like a holistic health um, kind of of like wellness coach and everything. And then because I was like relationships, you know, my jam and also they're such a big factor in terms of like your actual well being Mm -hmm. overall in life. Um, it's like, it's all, it's all related. It will all come up. Um, and especially like, you know, for people that work with me, like one-on-one and everything, I tailor make it to whatever they're needing, you know, especially it's centered around relationships, but it's like, (laughs) you're having struggles with mindfulness. Right. And so it's like, Okay, great. Cause I do work a lot with uh, mindfulness coaching as well. And so it's like, okay, let's pull that in <laughs> let's, whatever you need to create the relationships you desire. Let's do it. Let's take care of it. I love it. Yeah. That's amazing. I like when you can take experiences that you've had in your life and wrap them all into something that can, that can help somebody. And I, you know, I think that, you know, the, the tropes of like, people make fun of like the 18 year old life coach and Mm -hmm. like, well, what life. Right. But I think at a certain point you you've accumulated experiences and knowledge that you can share with somebody. And maybe it's, maybe it's just two or three conversations where you're like, Hey, even just your friend on the playground who had two moms that broke your world open. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) It could be just one call to be like, no, that thing you keep saying, like you can do that thing. And Mm -hmm. here's, 
how people have done that thing. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's all that person needs to just go and like light up their life. And I think that's oh, really yeah. cool. Absolutely. And I mean, I think that's also just like the beauty of coaching is that it maintains the autonomy of, of the actual client. Right. And because it's like, Oh, tell me what to do. And it's like, well, I don't know your life. You do. So <laughs> I can guide you on certain things for sure. But it is very much like where you, they come out of it and they're like, Oh, wow, I actually can do things in my life. And I'm like, yes, that is, that's the point. <laughs> and so that's why I, yeah, I love coaching for that reason. That's amazing. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed laughing with you today. And, (laughs) you know, I don't know if you probably, I'm sure you listened to Elizabeth. We laughed our asses off through that (laughs) whole one too. And so I can imagine spending a weekend with the two of you. I would have to do some mouth stretches to to laugh for for the whole weekend. So I I enjoyed this. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. I've also enjoyed it. Is there anything else? I know I said this question a little bit ago, but is there anything else you would like to (laughs) share and get out there? Um, I think, I mean, I always just like to, um, especially, you know, when um, most people that will be listening to this are in the non-monogamous space. And so just really being with yourself and just being gentle with yourself. I was like, wherever you're at in your journey and things, um, as you know, as I've (laughs) shared about my own and all the windings and all the things, um, that have happened. And it's just like, I think always just knowing that you can let it be your journey. You don't have to make it like someone else's or any, it's not right. It's not wrong. It's like all learning and, um, just really always holding on to that for yourself and being okay with that. Mm Mm-hmm. Love it. That's amazing. Yeah. So, well, thank you once again. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Emma? No, just a (laughs) huge amount of gratitude for you to you for coming on the, on the podcast, sharing everything you did. We had a blast as Finn said, it was awesome to laugh and have fun. And this will not be the last time that we we talk. It would be, can you imagine if we did one with Elizabeth and the four of us, that would be. Oh, we should do it. We we would. (laughs) I think we should do it in person. That's my, that's my vote. We should. I'm about that. All right. Listeners, it's coming in person live someday soon. Someday. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Uh, we'll make it happen. Enjoy, enjoy your day off and uh, give Elizabeth a hug for us and we'll talk we'll soon. Do. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And we're back. And we are back. Woohoo! Thank you, Liana, for all of the amazing work that you do and for such a fun conversation. Uh, A quick reminder, go to our website in the show notes. You can find links to all of Liana's work and everything. Photos of Liana. And photos, too. Yeah, it's amazing. Her work is amazing. Thank you, Liana. And thank you for sharing your story. Yes. A quick reminder, too, to go check out dayofvisibility.com. July 15th is the Day of Visibility for non-monogamy. We mentioned this in the intro, and we just want to quick remind you, links are in the show notes as well, to go check out the website and support the work that's out there. Yep. And join us all on July 15th. Yeah. There are a ton of organizations who are backing this, and we're super thrilled to be one of them. Yes. Next week. As you would expect, we have an incredible interview coming up. We are talking to Nick. Nick is one of the partners of Jace. You might remember Jace from episode 254. Him and Sammy and Nick all live in a house together in a in a triad dynamic. And it is a fantastic conversation. And we're super thrilled to be able to bring yet another member from that polycule on. So come back and listen and have a wonderful week in the meantime. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening.